call to order the first committee of the whole meeting of 2021 on January 4th. And um, uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, I think we just have one item on tonight's agenda. It's an important one, one we've been working on for a long time. Um, the uh, Park Avenue extension. And um, I think with that, I'm gonna turn it over to staff and ask uh, if you wanna go ahead and present uh, where we are on this and what sure. uh, you need for council to approve tonight. Well, thank you, council member uh, Corman and good evening, everyone, member of the city council. Um, I'm Jim Seitz, transportation director for the city. And uh, we're here tonight to associate, associated with three agreements that we need with the Boeing company related to the Park Avenue extension project. Uh, and I've got a presentation, uh, just a few slides I'd like to show you that I'm gonna share right now. Oops. Okay, this uh, property acquisition, uh, there's three separate agreements uh, for uh, that we're asking the council to uh, uh, go ahead and allow us to execute with the Boeing company related to the Park Avenue extension project, as I mentioned. Uh, three agreements are a permanent easement, a temporary construction easement, and a compensation uh, for agreement for cost to cure. Uh, the purpose of the project, uh, as we've been, as Brandy mentioned, we've been working on for quite some time, is to uh, get another second access into the Southport area. Uh, this is something that we've been working on for, for several years. This uh, diagram shows the actual improvements that will be constructed. The gray area is the street, uh, green areas, landscaped areas, and the yellow areas that shows the uh, pedestrian improvements that will be constructed related to the project. And uh, in the future, Southport will also uh, continue this road. Uh, on this diagram, it shows an interim uh, connection to this area, but they also will be constructing a major uh, road into the area as they develop the PS and E site. Uh, to get into the particulars of the uh, acquisition, uh, they mentioned there's two uh, uh, easements, one a permanent easement, uh, one a temporary construction easement. Uh, the blue area shows the temporary construction easement, which is uh, much bigger than the actual easement. We need this area to construct the improvements that uh, will be both public and private. Uh, the red area shows the actual areas that will be constructed and will remain public. Uh, it's kind of a rectangular area that you see in red there that will become the permanent easements. But as I mentioned, we'll need to have much larger uh, footprint to actually construct all the things that are necessary to be constructed in order to uh, get these agreements in place. Uh, the other is the cost of cure, which I talked about. Uh, this is a real estate term uh, that's used to talk about damages. Appraisers talk about the damages that, to a property when we don't buy it, buy it outright. Uh, there's certain rights that uh, Boeing will retain and damages that we need to uh, correct as a result of our project. One being the electrical distribution system, which is currently uh, the yellow uh, that shows on this diagram indicates where the vault is right now, their major vault that they access quite frequently uh, for their major distribution uh, system to the plant. This will have to be relocated uh, to outside of the uh, permanent easement area onto uh, Boeing's property on both ends, and then conduits will have to be uh, connected between those two in order for us to get this particular uh, utility out of the, the area. Uh, there's a cost associated with that, which I'll go over in just a moment. Uh, then there's also the, uh, a closing of uh, and removing of the Boeing's existing protected site entrance currently located at Lake Washington Boulevard North uh, to a new location. Uh, this uh, is uh, access that's just as you're approaching uh, Southport Drive along Lake Washington Boulevard. Uh, you can see the new buildings in the background there to kind of give you a sense of where the site is at. Uh, but it's the driveway that Boeing uses, they call it a protected site because uh, during strikes, they need to have provided access for contractors and others that still need to access the plant. And they use that for this purposes. And it'll be severed uh, by a new public road access so they will no longer be able to have that uh, driveway in place to, to, to serve that purpose in the future. 
Uh, so we'll be closing this site and making a continuous sidewalk through this area without the driveway. Uh, we'll be relocating that, building them a new uh, protected site along Logan Avenue uh, between 6th and 8th. It's going to be approximately 7th Street if 7th Street went over uh, or connected to this area. Uh, but we'll also be including that in the uh, uh, cost to cure uh, improvements that will be necessary and the cost to uh, implement those. Also in, in the agreement are some of the other conditions. Uh, as, as any industrial site that's been there for decades uh, would have, uh, Boeing has certain environmental uh, regulations that they have to follow, uh, especially for construction. Uh, activities that occur upon their property. Uh, so we're agreeing to fully comply with uh, all those environmental uh, laws and requirements that they're under uh, by the Ecology Order 8191 that they're operating the plant by. Uh, the city will also be uh, uh, getting all necessary permits, licenses, and approvals uh, will, uh, that are necessary to do the work. Uh, we're also putting together uh, environmental management documents. Most of this work we, we do anyway, uh, but we're, very, we're making it very formalized in documents that Boeing can review ahead of time to make sure that they understand uh, how we conduct our projects and make sure that they comply with the ecology order that they're under. Uh, they're also asking for uh, environmental indemnity uh, for any uh, damages the city uh, causes and uh, on the site as a result of our, our work. Uh, all these requirements will also be uh, applicable to future construction or any major modifications in the future as well, not only uh, for the construction of the new road, but in place as we move forward. And as I mentioned, most of the time, uh, these are just standard orders of business for us anyway. Uh, the Boeing Company also uh, is uh, interested in also having the, the use of this area in the future. Uh, for uh, it's uh, not known exactly what they might need it for in the future, but obviously there are certain things that uh, the duck, duck bank that's through there that might need some maintenance. Then we have to go in and dig out something. Uh, but they want uh, use of the property in the future. Uh, they don't want to uh, unduly restrict our use, of course. So there's going to be notifications and so on. But in, in any case, that if they have a spill or anything like that, they want access to the area or if they need to move things across from one side of the property to the other. They want to have certain abilities to access the area. Uh, so we're granting that right as well. Uh, just to summarize the, the financial impacts uh, for the project, uh, this particular phase of it, uh, the right away portion of it for the Boeing uh, purchases, the temporary construction easement, which is about 62,000 square feet is uh, a little over $188,000. The permanent easement, uh, which is a much smaller area, uh, will be $640,000. Uh, that's total cost of $828,000 plus uh, for the actual property acquisition itself or the, uh, the easement rights themselves. And then, as I mentioned, the cost to cure for us to do the electrical distribution system, uh, removing the protected site and constructing a new entrance uh, is just a about $1.3 million. Uh, so add those two together, we come up with a total right away acquisition for these Boeing agreements at uh, just over $2.1 million. Uh, some of the upcoming milestones that we have on the project, this is, a, of course, is a very major one. We've been working on this for quite some time. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, the amount of legal work that we uh, received from the legal staff, in particular, Leslie Clark and Cheryl Breyer spent a lot of hours working uh, with the Boeing Company and staff to uh, get these agreements to where they are today. And uh, we're obviously hoping to move forward with those and get them completed in January. Um, the next big agreements that we'll be bringing to uh, Council will be the BNSF construction and maintenance agreements. We hope to have those ready in February. Uh, BNSF is uh, predicting they'll start the work once we have the agreements in place in April. Uh, the Boeing uh, power supply relocation work will uh, occur between March 2021 20, uh, and uh, July 2021. And uh, we plan on once Boeing starts their, their work uh, to relocate their power line or power uh, system, uh, we will go ahead and advertise for our project and start planning uh, to get our contractor in there. Uh, we want to give them a little bit of a head start to make sure that they, uh, their activities don't conflict with our contractor. 
Uh, we, we plan on awarding um, our contract in April, giving our uh, notice to proceed to our contractor in May, and uh, we hope to have the project open to the public uh, November of this year. Uh, so we are, uh, the action tonight is we are asking the council for approval of these agreements. Uh, the council agenda bill mentioned that these are draft agreements. We don't expect them to change. So uh, we are telling you tonight that uh, we're asking for your approval, but uh, if there are any substantive changes that occur between now and before we execute the agreements, we'll bring you those back to you before we actually execute the agreement with the Boeing company. And with that, uh, we do have a committee report uh, and we're asking for approval of that. Okay. Jim, thank you very much for that presentation. I have one question to kick things off, and then I, I suspect that council members uh, may have other questions. But um, can you remind me, um, I know we've we've gone into uh, quite a bit of detail in past meetings with SECO development and the cost-sharing approach on this project. And um, um, this, this um, is sort of a refresher. This is, of course, uh, an important access point uh, for the success of Southport and Seco development projects, the various projects they have going there. And, and so um, presumably all these costs are part of the overall budget that was developed uh, and then split appropriately with, with Seco, is that correct? Yeah, let me give you a little bit of summary of how we're paying for the project. It's mainly funded through uh, local revitalization funding, which is the state sales tax uh, revenues. Uh, and the city's committed, uh, council has committed $7.5 million of that funding towards this project. The actual project cost is, is closer to $8.6 million. Uh, the difference will be paid by the SECO company or any amount above seven point five will be paid by the SECO uh, company through an agreement that we have with them. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, how about other council members? Uh, questions? Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, Ms. O'Halloran. Thank you. Um, with regard to the access to the easement, uh, Boeing's request, is there any possibility that they'll uh, need to like close that intersection or, or have major traffic impacts that, that we should be conscious of? Uh, that's a possibility, but they have to give us, as any project that we would have, where we have to go in and repair something or Boeing had to do something, we would have to give adequate notice to all property owners around the area. We'd have to have flaggers. So it really wouldn't be any different from any uh, normal construction activity or other activities that we might need to do uh, in the area. Uh, but just something that they, since they, it is still their property and they sell that property on both sides of the road, uh, they don't want to say, you know, limit themselves to future activities that they might need to, to do along the area. They don't anticipate anything, but it's just something that they want to protect their rights. But they're at the same time they want to make sure that they don't infringe upon the rights that we're purchasing as well. So they've agreed to uh, obviously give us uh, lots of notice and work with us for any work that needs to be done within that area. Thanks very much. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Also, I think Jim also in the agreement is a, a right for Boeing to have partial closures of the roadway over the course no more than so many minutes in the course of a day to provide for fuselage transfers that come into their site that would go across Park Avenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, other questions? I, I'm not sure if I'm seeing uh, hands raised. I might, I, I switched from my iPad to my computer and I might be uh, missing something. So call out if you uh, have a question, please. Okay, well, um, I, oh, uh, Mr. McGurvin? I, I thought of something. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so, do we have in in this understanding the for the protected access site that we're relocating? Do we have any idea on the the future for that particular site? Uh, or that I know that's completely outside of this, but I, I'm just curious. Uh, additional plans since that access point is being removed for for what that will look like in the future. Um, I'm not quite sure. I'm understanding the question. What, what the We'll take out that driveway on Lake Washington Boulevard and we'll replace it with uh, our normal street improvements such as sidewalk uh, and planter strip and things like that. Is that is that the question? Yeah, I guess that's what I was, I was asking. Is it, it wouldn't be in the long-term plans that we would need that access for anything else, right? 
No, it's just only access to the Boeing. Uh, well, it's their old truck uh, testing site there, so it's only accessing their particular area. And the city does have plans in that area for a, a sidewalk connection uh, underneath that railroad trestle there. So right. uh, it's actually probably a good thing to have that that uh, that access closed to basically uh, provide for less conflicts, having a, not having a driveway there. Uh, that, that's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. Um, other questions? Okay, well, um, with that, um, we have uh, committed the whole report, which I'll, I'll go ahead and, uh, in, unless there's, can I ask if there's any concerns? Have people had a chance to see the report? I, I can read it quickly if you've seen it. Anyone want me to read it? <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead then and, and approve that and read it out tonight uh, at the council meeting. And um, I, I believe that's all we have on for the uh, committee, the whole agenda, unless uh, I see any. Oh, um, yes, um, Ms. Benedetti. I just wanted to welcome Council President Corman. Oh, well, thank you very much. I'm honored and it's, um, it's a, certainly um, I'm uh, delighted to, to be running these meetings this year so uh thank you and i'm and, sure uh, council past president is also delighted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i have to tell you it's great seeing everybody um and, and happy new year to everybody and um with that uh committee the whole is adjourned and i'll see you all in uh about uh, 40 44 minutes i guess bye thanks thank you